coming up. Have your say on this year's flood response at a special public forum. Spark Ipswich returns for a second year to light up the city. How to support Relay for Life without actually being there. And how many 10 cent recycle containers are in one mile. Keep listening to find out. It's Thursday, June 9, 2022, and I'm Alan Roebuck. Welcome to Ipswich Today, which acknowledges the traditional custodians of the land on which it is produced and pays respects to elders past, present and emerging. This podcast is supported by Kinetics, people-powered web hosting trusted by Australian businesses since 1999. While I'm confined to the studio with my head cold, I wanted to catch up with Liz Tyndall May from One Mile of Recycling, which is a local fundraising project for Ipswich RSL Youth and Community Band, and as you might have guessed, it's centred on the suburb of One Mile. Thanks for chatting with Ipswich today, Liz. No worries, Alan. Can you explain what the One Mile of Recycling is all about Mm. and how you came up with it? Sure. So I live in Leichhardt and our neighbours are One Mile. Um, I also have a friend and her daughter is a very, very good girl and she um, plays in the Ipswich RSL Youth and Community Band. They had a little recycling tub there. They were saying that they wanted to um, collect cans to raise money to get a trailer for the equipment. And I know how much trailers cost because my husband was an ex-handyman and I thought it's going to take them forever to to fundraise to to get this uh, trailer that they need. So I thought I'd just, you know, turbocharge it. And I I said live next door in one, one mile next door and I thought, well, wouldn't it be cute if we had one mile of recycling and how would that look? So I measured, as I do, I measured cans and bottles and I got an average of about seven centimetres each. And so when you line line them up side by side, you get 22,986. So I thought there's my target. <laughs> well, that's there's something. You, it's, it's, I, I would have thought it was something you do in your idle time to work out how many yeah, containers go in to end. Measuring cans and bottles and getting an average, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, stuff that I do. And when yeah. did you kick this off, Liz? Oh, we only just did it about a week ago, uh, oh, the right. first of first of June. We started, and our first week we've um, already recycled uh, two thousand and eighty six out of the twenty two thousand. So about a tenth of the way there. But I'm happy. I'm not stopping until I hit that marker. So if if it takes me four weeks, if it takes me ten weeks, if it takes me three months, it doesn't matter. We'll, we'll hit that marker to raise a, a couple of grand for those kids. And just explain again what your connection is with the youth band. Uh, a friend of mine, her daughter plays in the band right. and they travel around Ipswich playing from gig to gig and they just need this trailer to put all their instru- instruments in and um, just, you know, play for everybody. So oh. it's, a, it's a not-for-profit organisation. Yeah. En- encouraging kids with their musical career has to be a good yes. thing. Keeps them off yes. the streets, keeps them busy and enthused. Yes. While you're focusing on One Mile and Leichhardt, I'm yes. sure you'd be open to containers from anywhere. Oh, 100%. It was more about the fact of uh, this is where we live and this is where we work here in the area. So I just thought, well, you know, I'll start here. I I would never say no to anyone who wants to recycle and and contribute money, absolutely. But it was just more of a jumping off point just to get people interested, like what's this one mile recycling and just to, you know, get some interest in the area as well. What a great grassroots idea. Anyone listening, Liz, how how can they uh, help? Well, we're just on the Facebook page because um, we, we don't have a lot of money to get a web page together, but Facebook's just, just as effective. So if they just want to search uh, One Mile of Recycling, uh, like the page, and I update every day as to our progress and, and all the great things that people are doing. The, the generosity, like uh, our first pickup was um, was a 1,000 cans and bottles. Wow. Like our first pickup. Like th- th- that's just, you know, we've, we've done a couple, but – I just overwhelmed by the generosity that people are just saying, okay, well, you can have this. They could go to the recycling and get the money themselves, but they don't. Um, they're, they're giving to this charity. So it's overwhelming. And I update and I thank those people publicly as well because we're very appreciative. What a fantastic idea. And uh, thanks for talking with Ipswich today, Liz. Thank you very much, Alan. And in other local news, the state government agency responsible for emergency management planning and oversight will hold a public forum into the 2022 flood preparation and response. If you live in Ipswich, you can have your say. Local Disaster Management Group Chairperson Mayor Teresa Harding has welcomed the opportunity for the community to be heard. The review will address the timing and effectiveness of emergency alerts issued to warn of flooding and effectiveness of cooperation between all agencies. 
The forum will be held in Goodna on Wednesday the 15th of June at 5pm for 5.30 at Goodna State School. However, you must register to attend. The review team will work closely with the Queensland Police Service, Queensland Fire and Emergency Services, Queensland Reconstruction Authority, local, state and federal agencies and other relevant entities to assess such things as the preparation and planning by the Queensland Government and local government agencies, the response to the weather event, including measures taken to inform the community, protect life, protect private and public property, manage the supply of essential services and managing dam operations. Relay for Life at Jacaranda Street Sportsfields is on Saturday, June 11, starting at 2pm. This annual event raises vital funds for the Cancer Council Queensland's research, prevention and patient support services. You can make an online donation now for the Ipswich event at the Relay for Life website. While the Ipswich Festival may be no more, the Spark event will again present multi-storey light-based art installations, a unique hands-on kids festival, live music takeovers of CBD venues and a multicultural event. Spark Ipswich runs for 11 days with arts, music and culture from July 7 to 17. Spark After Dark, the light-based installations which are spectacular. Spark On Tour, Waghorn to West, 16 artists, 4 venues in one huge night. Little Day Out, a music and arts festival for children, and Spirit of Place, an exhibition of new work by local Indigenous artist Sally Harrison. Download the full program from ipswichfestivals.com.au And a reminder, you'll find handy links in the show notes. Ipswich Today is supported by Kinetics people-powered web hosting trusted by Australian businesses since 1999. This podcast is also listener-supported. Please make a once-only gift or regular donation to help keep it online. Just go to ipswichtoday.com.au and click the Donate button on the homepage to make a payment through PayPal. Follow and stream this podcast from your favourite app, including iHeartRadio and Amazon Music Podcasts, or play Ipswich Today from smart speakers. Music is supplied by Purple Planet Music. This is Alan Roebuck. Thank you for listening. <laughs>